This video is going to cover how you can add Docker container support to your viral platform. We need to set up some of basic infrastructure for Docker support. So in the user workspace manager interface, we need to add a specific virtual machine image known as CoreOS, which is going to act as our launch platform for our Docker containers. So from the viral software page, we've then selected the CoreOS virtual machine. It's then downloaded and installed. The next piece we need to do is to set up subtypes. We were given a basic subtype definition known as Docker, and we use this effectively as a template. In this example, we're going to look at using the CoreOS Apache container, which is available on Docker. So the link here is just showing you uh, the location where you can find out more about the CoreOS uh, Apache example. And here we can see information about the command that needs to be run to start the Apache process. For each Docker type that we are going to add, we need to create a subtype. So we use the specialize function to effectively clone our template, and now we're going to customize it. So we're setting a name, CoreOS-Apache, and just adding a little bit of description text. Further down on the page, we see various different options here, most of which can actually be ignored. We don't actually need to set a RAM value. That's actually handled automatically by the Docker instance. We do need to set the default image. So we're going to match that to the name of our uh, subtype, so CoreOS-Apache. And in this case, we have a command value that we need to enter that we saw earlier. That's actually to enable the Apache process. And then we press Create. A newly created subtype is now present in the list. Next, we need to add our Docker container image to the system. So under containers, we're then pressing add, and we're gonna browse the Docker repository to find the information about the particular Docker instance that we're interested in. So here we're looking for CoreOS-Apache, and here we can find the entry. The details that we need here uh, the location, so here we can see docker pull CoreOS-Apache. So we want that information um, because we're going to be using that to pull in our image. So now I'm going to set my subtype to the newly created custom template, CoreOS-Apache. And I'm going to paste in that command. Then a piece we need here is just the CoreOS-Apache. We press create. This is now going to download the content. This can take some time. Here we can see it's downloaded. And we can either see the size, so 280 meg. So that container image is now loaded, and we can see it's present in the list. I'll move on to add our Docker instances into a topology. So in Maestro, we want to do file, preferences, and under node subtypes, fetch from server. This will then download, and now we can see our newly created subtype is present, Docker CoreOS Apache. An icon's now present in the palette, so now we're able to design our topology. So here's one I've already done earlier, and we can see a mix of CoreOS Apache, Linux containers, and regular routers. We're able to configure those as normal using Auto Netkit, and here we can see an example of the configuration entries that are being created. So I'm actually going to use a little annotation just to make a note of the IP address of this particular node. Same here, we can see the IP address that's been assigned. So the basic configuration is being built for us that's going to be applied to these CoreOS Apache instances when they start up. So we have a mix of different devices, as we can see. They're configured, and now we're going to start up my simulation. So my simulation is now starting up. 
and we can see normal status messages, including the addition of this tilde core OS. So this is an infrastructure virtual machine, which is hosting our three Docker core OS Apache instances. So we'll see this going active, just like all the other virtual machines in our environment. But this is an invisible device. It's not really part of our simulation as we normally see it. So all of our virtual machines are now up and running, as well as our Docker containers. So I'm going to connect into my LXC. So this is a full Ubuntu system. And that's deliberate because I want to use a specific command, wget, uh, to illustrate the operation here. So I can't log in to my CoreOS Apache devices. They don't actually have a shell, but we can ping them. So here we can see we've got connectivity from my LXC across to those CoreOS Apache servers on the right. But I can do wget because those CoreOS Apache servers are operating a web server. And here we can see the content of the page that's served back. So we're effectively able to use these CoreOS Apache instances as application servers uh, which can be used then to illustrate particular services running on top of our network. So again, a wget against a particular target. Here we can see, that again, the page is served to us. That file is then written out to disk. And now we can just uh, take a look at the content. cat index.html.1. There we go. And again, we can see that that service is up and running. That web server is connected into our simulation.